DNP3 Basics Lesson 2 Mapping DNP3 Terminology to SCADA In this class, we are not going to talk about all of DNP3 protocol. We are going to talk about what you need to know when dealing with a SCADA system. The architects of DNP3 protocol use a kitchen sink approach in the design. They designed a protocol with all the features they could think of and left it to future generations to decide what to use and when. Kind of like saying you can get from this city to another by car, plane, train, or bus. It is up to you to decide which way. As time went on, device interoperability issues arose because one vendor implemented one approach based on their interpretation of the spec, while another took a different interpretation and a different implementation. Without consensus, it was not easy to decide which parts of the protocol to implement to guarantee you could interoperate with another DMP3 device. There were so many options. You cannot fly from one city to another if you don't build airports. To correct this interoperability issue, DNP defined what are called subset levels. There are four subset levels from the simplest, level 1, to the most complicated, level 4. Subset level 1 contains the simplest and smallest subset of DNP3 features. A device can claim to be DNP3 conformant if it only implements features contained in subset level 1. Of course, it can only claim to be conformant to that subset level. But the important thing is that it will then be able to interoperate with all devices that claim conformance to subset level 1, as long as the claim is true. The same is true for the other subset levels. For this class, we will only consider those features that are part of subset levels 1, 2, or 3. If it is not in one of those subsets, then for the purpose of this class, it is considered not to exist. Knowledge to this level is significant since the DNP3 users group has published conformance test procedures for each of the first three levels. Most devices commissioned for operation in a SCADA system are subset level 2 conformant. Some may be conformant to level 1 and some to level 3. The important thing is that if you encounter a device that has passed DNP3 conformance testing, then this class will teach you what you need to know to work with it. In the prior lesson, we talked about three input point types, binary, analog, and counter, and two output point types, binary and analog. These are the only input-output point types that are part of the subset levels. These SCADA point types correspond to DNP3 point types as shown. For the input point types, we have the SCADA term binary and the DMP term binary input, which are the same. Binary inputs are each one bit. DNP3 also supports a two bit binary input point, but those are outside the scope of this class as they are not part of the subsets. Next, we have analog, which is the SCADA and the DMP term. In DNP3, Analog inputs are 16 or 32 bit signed numbers. And then we have the SCADA term counter. DNP has two types of counters the basic counter input, which I will normally call a running counter, are 16 or 32 bit numbers. Each one counts occurrences of a certain field event. The most common case counts power usage. Then we have frozen counter inputs. 
and an outstation may maintain a frozen counter value for each associated running counter. A frozen counter value is the value the running counter had at a certain freeze time. While the running counter keeps counting, the frozen counter value remains unchanged until the next freeze. The output points for SCADA are binary and analog. Binary output points in DMP are called CROBs, which stand for Control Relay Output Block. A command to a CROB can be latching or momentary. <clears throat> a latching output remains in the commanded state until another command is received. A momentary command closes an output for some period of time after which it opens without further instruction from the master. This usually gives a temporary electrical pulse to a field device to perform a certain action such as close a breaker. And just to confuse you, DMP3 supports a point type called binary output. These are not used to issue controls. They are used to report status of a binary output point. That is, a binary output point is an input. It's simpler for analog output types. SCADA analog output types are called analog outputs in DNP. Analog outputs are 16 or 32-bit signed numbers. DNP3 uses the term static value to refer to an input point's current state or value at the current time. Static value and current value are synonymous. DNP3 uses the term static object to refer to a point's static value plus a set of true-false flags that define current characteristics or qualities about each point. One example is whether the point is online or not. Some flags, such as online, are the same for all input point types. Some flags are point type specific. We will learn more later. Each static object may, at any given time, experience a significant change. A significant change is any change in the static value state for a binary input, any change in the static value for an analog input that the outstation considers significant. While analog significant change processing is defined by DNP3, details may be different for different points. Any change in the static value for a running counter input that the outstation considers significant. DNP3 does not define counter significant change processing, so this feature may not be supported by all outstations. Any freeze request directed to a frozen counter input, whether or not the static value actually changed, and a change in any flag. A significant change is recorded as an event for the associated point. The outstation may retain a list of events for each point. While a point has only one static value, it may have zero, one, or more than one event. A collection of DNP3 objects of the same type is called an object group. For example, the collection of static values for all binary input objects is the binary input object group. Each individual entry in the object group, the value for one point plus the point's flag, is called an object. The terms binary static object and binary static point are logically synonymous. The collection of events for all binary input objects is contained in a different group, 
the binary input event object group. So there are two object groups for each input point type, static and event. A static object group contains the current value or state of each point plus its set of flags. An event object group contains a list of events declared on members of the associated static object group. Each entry contains a static value as it existed when the event was declared. It may additionally include time of occurrence. Multiple entries may be made for the same point if it has undergone multiple significant changes. At any given time, a master can ask for the current state value of points by reading the static object group for that point type. It can ask for events by reading the event object group. The event object group may be empty since it only contains unreported events. An event remains in the event group until reported to the master. It is removed after the master confirmed it received the event. Multiple events for each binary input point must all be recorded and retained until reported to the master. Multiple events for other point types may be recorded and retained. It is also allowed to keep only one event when more than one is detected. And the one out of many to keep may be the first or the last. If this is important, you need to check with the outstation vendor. DNP3 supports four classes, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Class 0 is the static class. Classes 1, 2, and 3 are event classes. The important thing about classes is that a master may ask for input data based on class. In fact, this is the most common way of getting data from an outstation. All static object groups discussed belong to class 0. A master can get the static value of all points by reading class 0. Each object that can report events is assigned to class 1, 2, or 3. There is no DNP3 convention assigning an object to a particular event class. The master can get all events by issuing a single read for classes 1, 2, and 3. This definition of DNP3 classes is very basic. More details will be presented in future lessons. Well, that's the end of our second lesson. What have we learned here? This class is limited to capabilities that are part of DNP3 subset levels 1, 2, or 3. The subset levels do not include everything in DNP3, but they do include everything required of most SCADA systems. Inputs. DNP3 supports analog, binary, and counter input points. Counters can be reported as a current running value or as a frozen value. Outputs. DNP3 supports analog and binary outputs. Binary outputs are called CROBs and may be latching or momentary. The point type that DNP3 calls a binary output is not an output at all. It is an input point. Information for each input point type is maintained in two object groups. The first, called the static object group, contains a point's current value or state plus a set of flags. The second, called the event object group, contains a list of significant changes 
to objects in the corresponding static object group. Information from all event object groups is included in DNP3 class 1, 2, or 3. Information from all static object groups is included in DNP3 class 0. And finally, don't believe everything I say. There is an exception to the last bullet. This will be discussed later.